Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Herlene Raphael. I am your local nurse practitioner coming from Bix Homes and Wellness. Today we have the lovely, lovely Is. Anne. Anne is here. She's going to give us pearls. She's going to share all the dynamics about being a caregiver, about being a care provider at home to our parents or a chronically ill um, family member or friend. She has a load of pearls that she's going to share with you to the point where she's written a book about this stuff. So I consider her probably, probably one of the expert in this field. She has a lot of information that she's going to share with us. So we are definitely excited. I'm excited to have you, Anne. Thank I'm excited you. to be here and call me Nancy, Nancy the nurse practitioner. Nancy the nurse <laughs> practitioner. You know what, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you for correcting me. You know, I've known you as Anne for so many years, right? Um, and we, we continue to say Anne, 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 but Nancy the nurse practitioner is, is the name, is the name of town. So yes, Nancy the nurse practitioner. Well, maybe I should tell you the story because I think you need to know why that is. Tell me, tell, tell okay. all of us. Tell all well, of us. you need to know because my patients, every 4,000 of them ask me the same question. Oh my goodness. So I'm a twin. And when I was born, I was christened Anne Marie. And my twin sister was Patricia Marie. And when I was like four years old and there were seven of us running all around the house, or I think I was even younger, my older sister, Ellie said, mom, she doesn't look like an Anne Marie. Can we call her Nancy? And my mother was making dinner and she says, yeah, yeah, sure. And they called me Nancy after that. So I was Nancy everywhere I went, except for St. Anthony's where I was Anne Marie when I signed my report, my report cards, my papers. And then when I had to prescribe, I went back to Anne again because I had to be my legal name. Okay. And so I got kind of a, it, Nancy's actually a nickname for Anne. It is a, it means grace and it's an Irish nickname. So it's not all crazy. So I just want you to know. So I gave myself a Nancy the NP tag name to make it easy for people. Nancy the MP is great. I'll take it. It's a beautiful story, <laughs> but I, I also like Anne, Anne for Grace. That's beautiful as well. But we're gonna I do call like you, Anne. We're going to yeah. call, you, call you Nancy. So Nancy, how did you get into caregivers? What, what inspired you? What triggered the thought? What, made, what gave you that aha moment when you got started with this? Oh, wow. What, you want to take me back to when I'm 24? <laughs> oh, go for it. Tell me. Well, I'm just going to say that, you know, we all have a journey in our life and sometimes we don't know what it is. You know, you, I got through nursing school. It was really hard. I was like, am I going to do this? Why am I doing this? And I started working in home care. I found that I didn't like the hospital setting. I really love the community. So from day one, I worked for Nyack Home Care in Rockland County, New York for uh -huh. 18 years. And uh, I knew the community well and the community knew me. Uh, what really irked me was how does somebody prescribe for somebody that has a rash or a problem when they don't see it themselves? Mm -hmm. So I would land up calling a doctor or a clinician and saying, this rash looks like this, they have itching, they have this, and they'd order a cream. Mm -hmm. Back then in 1983, they didn't, we didn't have phones with cameras or telemedicine, and they wouldn't even allow us to send these pictures. Mm -hmm. So they would prescribe almost blindfolded mm -hmm. and it was a hit or miss. Um, so I decided that I thought I could take better care of the patient myself in the community. Mm -hmm. So I went back to school when I was 35 and became an NP. And still knowing the community well, what happened is I decided that I needed some primary care. So I did do that in some offices and stuff to really learn my skills. Uh -huh. And then I got cranky again. I, <laughs> the entrepreneur that I am is always thinking of ways to make things better. Uh -huh. uh, and so I would flit around like this hummingbird from office to office, leaving my seed of, of, of content, no of a concern and wanting to make things better. And one day I decided to start my own house calls company in Rockland County. 
And so I remember getting my phone number on my little flip phone and getting my first call from somebody who says, I got your number from Dr. So-and-so, would you come see me? It was the most amazing experience because I realized I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Uh And then about two weeks later, a doctor lost his license that had patients in Rockland County and I was handed 50 patients with Mm -hmm. no medical records. So I had to scrounge why they were on Coumadin and what they were doing. And they were, they were like orphans in the community. And I was like, oh my gosh, now I got 50 patients and I'm gonna have to take care of them. Uh, that started the whole service. And after that, everyone was referring because they knew Nancy, the home care nurse, was now Nancy, the nurse practitioner clinician, knew the community could bring in x-rays and ultrasound and lab tests and physical therapy and social workers and all that people need to stay in place at home. And it was a glorious program. I love doing house calls. And that lasted for eight years. um, till just 2017 when I merged with another company. Because then I got itchy again. (laughs) (laughs) The hummingbird you said, right? (laughs) Well, what happened was I, I knew, you know, Medicare is a difficult um, baby to work with and you have billing and you have to prove things and there's lots with insurance and I really wanted to take care of the people. So here you think you've got it all, you're running your own company, but with that comes, you know, staff and secretaries and your fax machine didn't work back then and your internet's down or something. Anyway, I can't say anything. Yeah. Um, So I started a box in the basement and started taking pictures and I had a consent form. And it said, would you let me use your picture maybe someday for a book or some kind of ad or something? And patients said, sure, take a picture of my herpes simplex, take a picture of my (laughs) bed sore. And so I had a box full of pictures and the box sit in the basement um uh and i moved out of rockland county to connecticut in 2015 and i kept commuting back to rockland to see patients and i was like what's going to happen to this community in rockland who's going to take care of all these people i got married again i moved to another state i stayed in a hotel in nanuet uh, two nights a week and would travel home like a little vagabond with my bag and work from my car. And um, I found a company that would take over my staff and the patients and allow me to be a consultant. And that's when I sat down and wrote the book in 2018. And it's called Caregiver Success. And the book is filled with all those pictures. There's 150 pictures in this book of color and stories and issues that patients had. See, the next thing that happened to me was, first it was, why can't I treat this rash that somebody has? Because I see it myself. And then I realized everyone was getting the same rash, but nobody knew what to do with it. Or everyone was getting shortness of breath, or they're getting urinary tract infections, or they're getting pneumonia or aspirating. And as we get older, There's so many things that all our patients get. And I found myself saying it over and over again. And that's when I said, there has to be a tool book with the how-to book. Something to tell you, mom moved in, but she didn't come with instructions. (laughs) And now you have to figure out everything you need to do to keep her out of the hospital. And how are you gonna do that? So- so I just wanted to tell you that is where my journey was. And, um, and the book came out in February, 2020. It looks like this, it's a big fat book like this, it's big. Um, and this is my patient and her daughter kissing her on the cheek. Uh. Um, and it has everything, lots and lots of pictures of people and stories and rashes and all the things I told you about because you know the rash is the same in India in Haiti, in Asia, 
it, it's a rash and it should be treated the same way, but you don't have to always use medication. There are ways to prevent that rash. Maybe it's a heat rash or shearing or whatever. So the book is a very practical, you know, lay book where anybody can say, wow, let me see. I think mom has constipation. What does Nancy, the NP, think we should do about that? <laughs> do you have a bowel chart? Do you have it hung up in the bathroom? Do you put Miralax in her coffee in the morning? Um, do you give her enough fiber? Do you know what fiber is? What about liquids? Does she drink any liquids? All right, so you see where I'm going. And a lot of this is very common stuff to us as clinicians, but it, it, it's not until somebody gets a bed sore and they say, what is this? And, it's, and I'm like, well, well, was she laying on her back all night long for 12 hours? Yeah. You're gonna get a bed sore. So you need to know all those things you can do to prevent what could happen. It's all about preventing medical crisis. Mm -hmm. no, nobody wants to go to the hospital, right? Not now with COVID, that's for sure. Nobody, nobody wants to go to the hospital now. They don't, but we land up there anyway. Yep, that is true. That is true. Very exciting. So you've been a nurse how long, Nancy? I didn't do the math. I'm sorry. You do the uh, math. <laughs> let's see uh 1979 oh my gosh wow how long is that in 20 years i've been an mp 23 years i've been a nurse practitioner nurse practitioner 23 years and, and the rest was a home care nurse home yeah care. you've been a nurse for all about you've so you've been a nurse total about over 40 years in your practice yeah that yes is fantastic so let me just read a little bit about your bio so you've already told us that you've done the home care stuff, you did the nurse practitioner stuff, and you are here to offer options to reduce burden on hospitals and provide pearls and tools for care providers to effectively take care of our loved ones at home. Correct? Um, so you're from yes. Connecticut. Nancy Rhodes is a board certified nurse practitioner. She's a member of the Nurse Practitioner Association of New York State. She's worked as a home care provider for many, many years. Now today in her new role, her journey is to teach us about, about being effective care, caregivers. Why is that important? Why is an effective caregiver important? Because I, Nancy, I was reading articles about the baby boomers. The baby boomers are individuals over the age of 65. We have a huge influx or large number of baby boomers um, in our surrounding area in the states, Pennsylvania, Florida, Ohio, baby boomers everywhere. And they are living longer. They are living longer. They are more active and most of them, they want to be at home. If yes. now they are struggling with a chronic illness, a, um, a chronic disorder, let's just say CHF, congestive heart failure, or um, high blood pressure, or if they have multiple, multiple issues that lead them to immobility, that leads them to problem with swallowing, that leads with multiple medications, right? Um, so the baby boomers, for the caregivers, for the care providers, I see, I found that the article was very, very explicit on um, burnt out, financial issues, time, time management. Um, you know, I really would like for you to touch a little bit about those issues for us when I finish reading your bio, because I think, I think your expertise, the information that you have can really give us some guidance. It can give me some guidance. I hope so. I'm working on that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so let's go on. Um, so February 2020, February 20, 2020, Nancy offers information to empower you or your loved ones so you can stay out of the hospital. Yes, stay out of the hospital. That's what we want. We want to reduce hospitalization. We want to reduce readmission. We want to reduce medical crisis and we want to encourage better quality of life. And that's nurse practitioner Nancy's goal. 
In her book, Caregiver Success, it's full of more than 150 images and stories to show the human side of aging and some of the many tips and pearls, including how to use a Hoyer lift. What in the world is a Hoyer lift anyway? You'll tell us later <laughs> how to use a Hoyer lift. Prevent skin tears and wounds. How to treat simple, how to treat constipation and other medical issues. She touches on nutrition for the elderly. She talks about the physiolog physiological changes that can occur with the elderly and what should we look out for to help improve their quality of life. She talks about finding purpose. For us as care providers or caregivers to teach or to help or encourage our elderly parent or family for them to find their purpose. Because you know, at that age, they're stag they feel that they're stagnant. Or at that age, they feel like they've given up. There's no hope. There's nothing else I can do. I'm getting older. I'm done. So NP Nancy is will teach us how to teach our elderly parent how to find their purpose along the continuum. And then she also talks about taking care of the caregiver. How do you care for yourself as a caregiver? How do you care for yourself? How do you prevent burnt out? How do you find resources in the community? How do you find resources to enhance your self-care? This 360 page book is geared for home health providers, healthcare providers, nurses, aides, students, family members, family members with disabled family or that has multiple medical conditions that are homebound. All right, I've said a lot. I've said a lot, but I really want, if you can please touch a little bit about the aging community, the aging population, and what does it mean for the caregivers? What does it mean for me as a caregiver and what should I be prepared for? How do I get myself prepared to care for a loving, a loved parent when they're growing so fast and there's so much activities that they wanna be involved in? So let me just give you a couple of you know, things that you need to know that, did you know that every day until 2030, 10,000, baby boomers are turning 65. Every day for the next 10 years, 10,000 a day. That's a lot. And some of them die and don't make it to 75, but some of them live to 103, like two of my aunts did, you know? And, and they just passed away like last year. Um, but the point I'm getting at is, is that, and I need to just divert, divert for a minute because as I was writing this book, I found that last April, Whoops, are you there? I'm here. I, I lost you. I could hear you. I can't see you. Uh, let me go back and zoom. Oh, there you are. I don't know what happened. Um, I, I, as of my book was being published, I landed up um, actually starting a YouTube channel. And I did that because, ooh, where am I? Is that good enough? <laughs> Whatever. So what happened was I, the book is full of like uh, process. Like, let's talk about the Hoyer lift. To use a Hoyer lift, you need to wash your hands, tell the person what you're going to do, crank up the bed, uh, get your lighting on, you know, all the things you need to do, put the railing down, get the Hoyer. By the time you're done, there's 45 bullets, but I decided that I needed to start doing YouTube videos because people don't always learn by reading a big fat book like this. It's great to have it in your, in your room with a marker and you can mark it up and that's really good as a tool. Do you want me to keep going or am I looking funny on the screen? No, you're doing great. I could hear you just fine. Okay. So I started doing this, these videos. I actually took my patient out of her bed and it was last April and put her in the kitchen and watching TV with an aide. And I used her beautiful little bedroom with fluffy curtains and 
her hospital bed and I put the aid in the bed and I did all these videos. How do you wash your hair in bed? How do you position somebody in bed? How do you change a bed with somebody in it? How do you use a Hoyer lip by yourself? Well, did any of us know that we were gonna have a world pandemic in six months, eight months? No. I, I freaked out because what happened to me was I got 31,000 hits from people all over the world that were in the same place as America that didn't know how to use the Hoyer lift. So they were writing, Nancy, thank you for showing me how to use this thing. Are we going to the video? <laughs> no, not yet. I'm asking, go ahead. You could tell us the story. So uh, I, when I got a message about the hair washing, which is using plastic bags and folding towels, and you don't need a, a special blow up device. I learned this from an old army nurse from home care. And I did a video. And this girl from Pakistan wrote back to me, Nancy, love and kisses from Pakistan. Thank you for showing me how to wash my 95 year old mom's hair. Oh. She loved it and it didn't cost me anything. I realized that this was bigger than I could ever imagine. I had 80 people from India on my site taking care of their parents, asking me things. And I have a woman from Australia. So you know what? It's not America anymore and the baby boomers. We are now talking about 703 million people all over the world are over 65. So I have to take away the back cover of my book for baby boomers and I have to say it's for all the people all over the world that are over 65. All right. Can I, can I show a real, a, a little clip of the video? Because Nancy is, 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 it's telling us it's the how-to, right? It's a process, the simple steps of the how-to. So let me let me play a quick, short um, clip of Nancy's video. And of course you can find, you can write the link. You could find the link on our Bakes Homes and Wellness page where you can um, take advantage of the video and all of Nancy's videos, okay? But let's let's go on and see if we could just play a quick, short hi everyone i hope you're doing okay out there it's pretty been pretty tough for a lot of us um, caregivers of all types and i'm going to go over with you today about how to um, be a good caregiver learn about um, should you be a caregiver caregiver burnout how to help yourself so you don't crash and burn and some resources out there so i'm nancy the nurse practitioner and i'm here to talk to you today well, first of all, what is a caregiver? Okay, if you're watching this, you're probably a caregiver. You're probably either taking care of your, your spouse, your child who's disabled, you're mm -hmm. taking care of your aide and you're taking care of somebody in their home. Um, and, and duties are varied, you know, depending on chronic illnesses, mental illness, disabilities, or old age, we are all taking care of um, somebody if we're a caregiver. It can mean, mean meal preparation, it can mean taking care of bathing and dressing. It can take care of diapering or, or taking care of their skin and wound care. And um, maybe you are a power of attorney and you're talking on behalf of your, your, your parent or your spouse or managing their medication or all of the above. And believe me, I've seen a lot because I have taken care of people in a home, in homes where they've changed and the family had to adapt and change with them. So I'm going to be a caregiver soon myself. Uh, as a nurse practitioner doing house calls for 40 years, you know, I um, understand what happens in the home and I've seen, a, I've lot. seen a lot. And, and because, because of that, nurses. I was able to make a, write a book to help with tips and tools for everyone. And a caregiver is also taking care of yourself. And being at 70 and taking care of yourself is just as is difficult as being 90 and you don't want to fall down those basement stairs and flip-flops and you don't want to um, have any problems where it gives you permanent damage or illness so we'll talk about the book in the end but i want to let sh sure make sure you know that the point of the book was for crisis prevention and to to keep us all well so that we have a quality of life not just a quantity of life so uh, my mother-in-law is moving in in June and we live in a ranch and we are already thinking ahead about what we're going to do. 
Um, so she's going to move into a spare bedroom with a bay window off the back garden, which she'll get to look at. And I could see her morphing in that room if this time goes on. I mean, she is 88. She has some difficulty walking. She is hard of hearing, but she's very alert. But, you know, when you're 88, anything can happen. And she's widowed. So, you know, we just need to make sure that we're ready for the next step. Her daughter, Donna, who is my husband's sister, is going to move in with us. She's going to come, she's going to retire, and she's going to take one of the other bedrooms. And this way we're all together because she's single and we could all support each other. And we all get along. And that's really important because if you don't get along, it's going to be a long haul. <laughs> so should you be a caregiver to somebody who's elder, uh, the first thing to think about is time. You know, luckily for me, I am working from home and I will be here to be able to to help out and that will mean time because you don't know what kind of time is going to get involved as time goes on and if you need to get an aid then that might be able to help some of that time that you need to be away and it's something to think about and you also want to be like we said available for changes and thinking about changes so being that we're in a ranch i can see us wheeling mom down the down the hallway if we have to because she's not able to walk very well due to her neuropathy anymore. And, and everything's right outside the house. It's easy to put a little ramp on and whatnot. So we're thinking like that. Uh, if we had to, we could have done a mother daughter or something like that, but that's expensive. And, and usually the um, older adults don't necessarily have that money to help you build that on your house. So you have to look at the finances of the people getting involved as well. Um, you know, my cousin Rosemary was a caregiver for many years. My grandfather had a stroke, and I remember going to visit him in the Bronx, New York, and leaning over his hospital bed, you know, um, railing, and I was like maybe seven, and it was a Sunday dinner in the Italian family, and we would go see grandpa. And she told me that she was a teenager when this happened, before she was married, that her father had a stroke. He couldn't speak. He was paralyzed on one side. And so she would read to him and she would be with him. And since then, she uh, then had, she got married. Um, Aunt Mary and Aunt Annette um, were, lived into their hundreds and they all lived together in another state and brought their husbands with them. And she took care of them there as well. So Aunt Mary died a couple of years ago. Aunt Annette died at 103 just this March. And she was a caregiver for probably like 30 to 40 years, wow. which is amazing yeah. that one person uh, was able to do a lot of this herself. And not everybody's made to be a caregiver. And it's important to know if you are not able to be a caregiver. So let's go over some other things um, that I want to make sure you know about. You know, risk factors for caregiver burnout. I mean, burnout is massive. I had this one patient who... Her husband was taking care of her. He was probably five years older. They were both in their 80s. They did have support. They did have family nearby, but he didn't take care of himself. He didn't go for doctor's appointments, and he was taking care of his wife with dementia who could not do much for herself and as actually nothing for herself. And he had a massive stroke, and he died, mm -hmm. which left her with the children taking care of her and moving in 24-hour aids. You know, he was her primary caregiver, and she noticed that he was gone because that was her husband. It was very sad. And she's still alive now, and it's 15 years later. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's pretty heavy on the family. Yeah. So they had to be ready for that, that sort of change. So burnout can be determined by the severity of the person's needs. You know, some patients get gastrostomy tubes, and fun, then they get a Foley catheter going. Then they're on nebulizer treatments, and they're bedridden, and they need to be changed, and they become a 24-7 care person. Uh, it's important to know whether that's something that you can do. And if you reach the point where you can't do it, you need to be able to say to yourself, this is too much for me, have a family meeting, and make the next moves of, of, of change for plans. Maybe you're not physically able to turn someone in bed. You're either overweight or you have your own blood pressure problems or you're just older and it's difficult to do. So are you gonna be able to do that? Mm. 
are you somebody who has unhealthy coping skills? Some people just don't see the glass half full and this is just too much for them and you need to see yourself for who you are and be honest with yourself. If you're neglecting self-care, you're going to burn out and we'll go over that because self-care is massive for all of us, but it's also specifically massive for the caregiver. Lack of respite care, you need to have a break. Mm -hmm. You need to have a break and we'll go over that too. And the duration of caregiving. You could be taking care of somebody for 15, 20 years for all you know, and that's a long time to be caregiving. And if you're living with a spouse who doesn't speak and, the, and they're um, with you, it could be pretty isolating. So it's important to think about all these things. So those things are what can cause uh, caregiver burnout. I, what I really want to go over with you is um, ways to reduce the stress. A couple of things I want to say from my observations of working in the home for many years is that some patients were at home with a live-in aid. And this one particular one stood out because she was from Jamaica and she had two small children and they Skyped every week uh, to say hello to their mom they were being taken care of by her sister in Jamaica and she was sending money home to help the family by living in America for five years, taking care of this woman who didn't speak, needed 24 hour care. She was overweight and she'd be on her phone most of the day. And one day I said to her, Dominique, why aren't you like online learning to be a nurse or learning a musical instrument or learning nutrition or anything you want and 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 i can help you lose weight and take ex, you know do exercises so that when you get home you're a better person for all this time you've spent there so it's something to think about of course you got to take care of the person but if they're sleeping you know and you're sitting there and you don't need to sleep yet then maybe you should do something to, to improve your your situation for this time that you're there it's important to take a break it's important to know, like, let's say you had to go to the grocery store and um, your family members there walk around the parking lot, wear your sneakers after you go grocery shopping and mom is in your home with, with your other relative, take a little time for yourself, call a friend up on the phone and take a 10 minute walk. And maybe later on in the day, you could do the same thing. So this is great. Great, Nancy, great information. Um, so uh, we're going to pause the video here because we want to hear more from you. We're going to pause the video and then um, our viewers can go back, go on your website um, and finish how to prevent burnout and that it's important to take a break. Um, so yeah, I want to go back to, I want to go back to the how to process and, and we were chatting a little bit about family members, <clears throat> excuse me, family members, and as well as the homebound um, patients that you've encountered. Um, so if you had three tips, again, that you can share with us in terms of the stress, for example, what would, what would it be? How can you help me deal with my stressors as a care provider? Um, well, one thing that I think is really, really important is to make sure you are a little selfish have a little bit of selfishness where you realize that you need to think about yourself like the oxygen mask on the plane. You can't put it on the little baby next to you until you put it on you first, because if you don't do you and you pass out, the baby's not going to make it or the, the family member or the person who needs you. So you need to take time for yourself. One thing I think people really don't do is they don't get enough sleep. Um, sleep is so important. And a lot of times the bedroom is supposed to be an oasis of sleep and peace. I will say, if you could turn off the news, make, it, make yourself a comfortable space, there is no computer in there, you don't have the monitor right next to your bed if mom's in another room. But on the other side, make sure you, 15 minutes before bedtime that you go in and you give yourself a space to think of this is my room. And actually the bedroom is supposed to be for sleep and sex. And you're not supposed to go in the bedroom to read a book or do work on your computer or pay your bills. Come on. <laughs> that's what they say. That's what it says. And, and that's one thing people need. Because if you have better sleep, you have a better outlook. You have more energy. Your endorphins are better. 
you're not aching as much. Okay, so that sleep is like massive. Um, I think you need to find your spirituality. And I know that you and I are going to have our own lecture regarding that. Whatever gives you inner peace to help you, you need to have that to start your day. Take time out for yourself to find that space of peace is important as well. And the, the last thing is you need to get medical care. You need to get your medical care. Important. Three tips. I love it. You know, I, I love what you said about um, the, the airplane, selfish oxygen mass airplane mode. It is so true because if you are depleted, if you are depleted, you don't have enough to give. That yes. is, for me, that is, that is the best way that I can put it. You need to continue to find ways to refuel, to refocus, to replenish so that you can have enough for you to give. Uh, because if you're running on E, you can only go so far. You can only give so much if you don't have. So that is absolutely a solid point that, that you shared with us. Um, and can I add something else though? Those were all like, practical body preservation things, but there's so much more. In other words, if your mother moves in to your community, you need to embrace your community. You need to, if she has Alzheimer's, you need to become a member of the Alzheimer's Association, join a network. You wanna be part of a support group where you cannot be part of a pity party, but part of a solution party. This one friend of mine had four or five wives that she met through Alzheimer's group and I took care of all the husbands and one by one they died over nine years and one day I was in New City Diner having a sandwich and they were all there having lunch together they all met once a week as like sisterhood and Aww. they still keep in touch now and all the men have passed but they went through so much together but they found their network and they found this socialization so that they, they felt like they were not in it alone. So you definitely have to find a good network in your community, maybe through your church, um, through friends that are in the same boat. Don't lose your friends and don't lose your identity. That's mm. another thing. If you're taking care of somebody for years and you don't meet a friend for lunch anymore, they don't get that you are taking care of mom. They don't understand it because they're not in the same situation. And one by one, you may lose these friends find new ones, find a whole new pack of people to hang out with to support you so your life can go on, you know, after mom passes. Otherwise you're alone and lonely. And who are you? Yeah. You know, who are you? Um, so if you like to draw or you like to play your instrument, and mom's in bed, take like a half hour and enjoy something that makes you very happy, you know? And you know what else? Use your family members. Make sure you get your brothers and sisters or relatives that you can count on to pick up duties for mom. Somebody yeah. takes care of the bills. Somebody takes care of the meds. Somebody's the power of attorney. If mom goes to the hospital, we all take turns. Yep. If we live in different states, who says mom can't be moved there for three months with you? So I get a three month break. I had a I had an Indian family and every family, every two months, they'd switch them. They took the hospital beds and everything and everybody moved. And um, it was the greatest thing they did. I had to find the patient somewhere in Rockland County every two months, <laughs> but everybody got to be in each other's shoes and they all owned the um, responsibility. responsibility. It was really wonderful to watch how families can do that. You really separate the men from the boys sometimes when it comes down to, you know, Bob was her favorite child, but Bob doesn't show up at all, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever, all those things happen. Um, but you're the one in the trenches and you're the one there for every, every hot thing that happens. Um, don't take it to heart. You're doing the right thing as a caregiver, you know? Don't ever give up on what's the right thing to do. That is an important point that you just made because, you know, we sometimes deal with a lot of guilt, right? Yeah. I think, I think um, for me, I, I dealt with that a lot my, when I was a caregiver for my dad who had a stroke many years ago. 
And the minute I left his bedside or I wasn't doing something, I felt guilty. I felt, I felt like something was eating me up. Is that something that you find common as caregivers? Do you, do you run across that a lot? I think because they're older and the child is in their 50s or 60s and there's gotta be a story of family relationships. You know, we have our favorites, we have our better relationships and you may be taking care of somebody that you may not actually like that much <laughs> or didn't have a great relationship with or they have dementia and now they're so mean and have changed that you've lost your mom to this person that you don't understand. Um, that's the beauty of joining a dementia group because even Tifa Snow, if anybody's heard of her, I tell my people in the support groups, find out where a mom's dementia is. If depending on what part of the brain will tell you how your behavior needs to change so you get through the day, she can think you're um, stealing her pocketbook and have uh, psychosis or, or paranoia. If you can figure out what that is about, you can change how you can behave and not get you know, an ulcer over it. Um, it's not your fault and it's nothing you can do, but you can change your behavior. It's just, there's your power. You Ed are empowered. Ed education, right? Getting involved, educating yourself. So you, as you said, to get ready for this situation. And so if I'm hearing you, if I'm hearing you clearly, I'm, I'm hearing you as a caregiver, um, I need to first assess what's going on with this parent or family member. So if it's, for example, dementia or Alzheimer's, then I need to educate, get educated on the dynamics of Alzheimer's. Um, and from there, then I will have, I will be empowered. I will have the information that I need to be an effective provider. Is that, is, am I correct? Am I understanding you correctly? Yes, you are. But we need to also go on to the financial part because this is where people really get hurt. You know, my mother-in-law is moving up with us and I met with this woman today who's a geriatric care manager. And she says, are you already working on who's gonna be your power of attorney in Connecticut from Florida? Are you already gonna look at her well and make sure you make sure everything's in order because you're selling her house down there and she's leaving states. And what is, where's the money going and what are you gonna blah, blah, blah. And if I work, do I have a family leave act from my job? So I could be home when mom has to go to the hospital and I don't lose my job. You know, the finances are big. Is she a vet? She's a wife of a vet. I found out through all my YouTube videos by interviewing someone that because her husband was a vet in World War II, but he died, um, she isn't, might be entitled to monies to help her when she needs that aid. So we don't have to all scramble looking for money like everyone's always doing. Get that Medicaid. You know, you need to start looking at all the resources out there and don't and be be fearless. Ask questions. Look for the answers so you're not the one that's burning. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there. You just have to know where to tap the system. And it's different per state, unfortunately. You know, we're in a United States, but we're not united. Right. Things are different in New York than they are in Pennsylvania for you. Yeah, the benefits are different in each state, but I love what you said about tapping into the community resources because that definitely relieves some other burden. I know here we have the Department of Aging. Um, one of the things that they do here, we have um, the summer fruit and produce program where they provide vouchers for the elderly and that they're able to get fresh produce from the local farms. They could get like a bag of vegetables. That's great. Salads and everything else. So yeah, but if you don't know that, if you don't ask, you don't know if that information is there. Yeah. Um, so I love what you said about caregivers need to really research the resources mm -hmm. and to know um, what's out there so that their lives could be made a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Thank you for that point. 
You know, your home health aide, if you end up getting a home health, aid, uh, home health nurse, a visiting nurse coming out because mom was in a hospital and she had, you know, heart failure needed to be addressed and she came home and you get a skilled nurse to come out for six or seven weeks with an aide for a couple hours, you can really tap her and get a social worker to come in and tell you everything in that community. So you already have some networks you never knew were there because you didn't have that resource before. So when home care comes out, let them pull out their Rolodex of stuff. Like I used to have in the back seat, I would pull out all sorts of papers and say, you need this, you need this, you need this. And, and the daughter would say, wow, okay, I'll call them Meals on Wheels, I'll go get this, I'll get that. And they were very happy that I had this box of tools, you know, for them. Excellent. That is great, that is great. <clears throat> Any other tips that you can provide for us as caregivers? that we need to, especially now in this COVID era, is there anything, uh, any pearls or anything that stands out that you're, 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 you wanna share with the viewers, you wanna share with me as a care provider as well? What should I be doing and looking for right now um, with my parents, with my patients, with my family members that are elderly? Um, I will say we need to really take care of our bodies as far as flexibility. Ever since I hit 63, every morning I get out of bed. No way. I, You're not I, 63. I, yeah, I lay down on my bathroom, my, my uh, bedroom floor, and I stretch for 10 minutes. I stretch my head. I do my arm exercises. I, like I move stuff I didn't know <laughs> I could move. <laughs> And you know what? If you don't move it, you'll lose it. And, and I did a chair yoga video with this wonderful, on my YouTube video. And you could put your mom in the wheelchair and you're in your chair and together you exercise in the morning and say, good morning, let's do our stretches. So nobody gets injured. Look at you, you're so funny. Look at the chair <laughs> yoga video. It's actually, it's, she had me doing stuff for carpal tunnel. like. She, she's a yoga therapist. So she wow. talked, she works with a rotator cuff. And I mean, I loved what she did. So you need to keep limber because if you don't, you are going to get injured and then you're no good to nobody. <laughs> nobody. Yeah. Uh, yes. you know, injury. I found that injury um, is really prevalent with good caregivers. Um, I, I, I've, heard many nurses, nurses aides complain of lower back pain and yes. leg pain and this pain, sciatic pain, that pain, wrist pain from poor body mechanics lifting. So yeah, keeping limber, what you said was, again, na you nailed it on the head. Keep so in the book, I have seven pages of on the floor. I took Erin, my daughter-in-law, when I was in Colorado and took pictures of her and I had her do, do stretches so people can, and if you can't get on the floor, do it on your bed because you don't want to get on the floor and you can't get up. <laughs> you know, if you're 75 and you just have, you just don't want to be on the floor, do it in your bed. You can stretch mm -hmm. in your bed. You can have a really good stretch. The big thing is, is on your hands and knees, you know, getting your back up and down, you know, up and down like where you're actually you need to make arch. your back arch like a cat. I mean, you know, there's yoga names for these things, but when you do that enough, it hurts when you do it because you know it's not in place. You need to do this twice yeah, a day. Strengthen the core. Strengthen your the core, core, everything, yeah. your ankles, your everything. This video, she even has you doing something on a tennis ball with your toes, which is like a reflexology. She teaches you how to massage the ball of your foot which is actually meridians that go to our sinuses and our heart. Did you know that? You knew that. Oh, yeah, reflexology. So yeah, so you got a little tennis ball on the floor after your yoga chair uh, mm -hmm. exercise. I think that's, she's brilliant. It was very, very well done. That's awesome. Check that out, you guys. It's called chair video, uh, yoga. Wonderful. So, mm -hmm. Anything else you... No, well, I don't, no, you really now give us a lot of pointers, Nancy. This is great. I'm excited. Thank you so much for sharing um, all these pearls. Um, again, 
Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Everyone that's on the platform, Facebook, YouTube, uh, whichever flat platform you've used to join with, um, join us this evening. Thank you. We have um, NP Nancy that's here with us, and she is sharing pearls, pearls and tools for caregivers so that we can effectively take care of our loved ones at home, which includes our elderly parents, um, our chronic ill individuals, or even um, our family members that have been home due to a stroke or um, any comorbidities that lead them to be homebound. Um, Nancy, I'm sorry, yes, Nancy, I was going to say Anne, <laughs> Nancy <Tell> me that. <laughs> has um, published um, a beautiful book. The book is basically a how-to book. The how-to book that goes over in detail, step by steps on how to, for example, use a Hoyer lift. What in the world is a Hoyer lift? Um, a Hoyer lift is like a device that we use to lift um, our bed bound individuals so that we're not using our body weight. We're not using our backs we, we, to prevent injuries. So it's a mechanical device that we can use to lift our family members out of the bed into the chair or out of the chair back into the bed back and forth. So she has step by steps the how to to do that. She has steps on how to do um, an effective bed bath like a sponge bath. She has steps on how to do mouth care. Uh, what can you use? She has steps on how to wash um, your loved one's hair in the bed. Information about um, power of attorney, um, codes, um, DNRs, um, living wills. So she has this book is, I would say, a how-to manual. If I had to give it my own name, forgive me, forgive me, um, Nurse Nancy, if I had to give it my own name, I would say it's the Caregiver Success How-To Manual, all right? It is thick. It's, she'll put the picture, let me see the book, Nancy. <laughs> it's a thick, thick manual, how-to manual, but she also has YouTube videos that you can find online that will also give you a descriptive pattern, okay? So the name of the book, Caregiver Success. Caregiver Success, okay? We're gonna post that again on our page. You could find information about that. I have um, a website, can I tell you? It's, it's very simple. It's all caregiversuccess.com. www. okay, easy. Easy to find, it's also on Amazon. Uh, and it comes in ebook, which is good because you can get electronic and don't have to carry this around if you don't want to. Perfect. Ebook, caregiversuccess.com. It's an Amazon. Please, if you have anybody at home, if you have a relative, I know I have a relative that I may need all that information. If you have a relative, tap into. NP Nancy, she will have a load of information to share with you. Not only, not only, I love the part where she says, take care of yourself. Now, you know, I'm all about taking care of myself. I'm all about that. I am, uh, I, ne I need to have enough me to give. I need to wake up in the morning and feel like I'm replenished. I'm full, I'm ready to go with my prayer, with my breakfast, with my exercise. I'm ready to go. Um, so that is important. Um, lastly, lastly, um, Nurse Nancy, uh, how can we get a hold of you? If anyone has any questions, they can always email me at nancy, the, T H E N P, at gmail.com. If you see my videos on caregiver success, please subscribe because you never know which video you really needed or want to share with your brother or somebody in another country because that's where they're going, it seems. Um, so caregiver success is the name of the YouTube channel as well. Um, you can also um, call me if you want. My number is 844-406-2629. Okay, so you can always call me, leave me a message, and if there's something I can do for you,
I will help network for you because that's what it's all about. Uh, continue to watch my videos because we're doing one on social security and when should you start collecting when you're hitting in the baby boomer age. I have a Medicare specialist helping us figure out what plan do you pick or how, what's A, B, C, and D. I'm doing one with an art therapist. I'm doing one with a lady from Australia on writing your family's life books, Ooh. which is beautiful. That's She's nice. cool. I have like 20 videos coming up of all these beautiful people out there that are all taking care of us and our parents. So let's make it really good for each other. I'll bring the experts to you so you can get the information and just watch the videos. Okay. Fantastic. And I'll be sure to be looking out for those videos myself and Thanks, really. um, post them um, because you know, I love the elderly. I'm all about taking care, yeah. good care of my elder. Um, well, it was great. It was really, really nice um, spending you. this time with you, um, Nancy. You have a gift. You have a very special gift. Um, and I thank God for your talent. I thank God for your gift that only you can provide for all of us. This is truly your purpose. Um, you are really walking um, in your purpose. You smile so hard and you shine um, sharing this information. There, I mean, there's no way that I will not receive it with love because you are shining, you are beaming, you are enjoying this. So I thank God for your gift, your talent, and giving you the ability to walk in your purpose. You keep doing what you're doing. Many lives will change. Thank you for being instrumental and um, allowing us to have better quality of life not only us as caregivers, but also to provide that quality for our family members and our loved ones. Uh, because a, the role of a caregiver is an extremely hard um, journey. I, I lived it for um, a, 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 year, a solid month when my dad had a massive stroke and I cared for daddy until the day he died. Although it was physically, emotionally, and financially taxing, but this is all that I could have done for him. I yeah. felt like that's the only gift that I could have given him because of so much of what he has done for me as my, my father. And so, you know, to be on that other end, that other fence to teach me how to be a better provider it is a gift. It is a world gift of talent that you have. So again, thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us. Thank um, you for having me. Um, I'm it. sure we'll have you again for another topic on how to take care of our elderly patients. Um, I'd be glad keep, to come on. Yeah, right. Keep, keep staying beautiful. Keep shining. Keep smiling. Keep changing lives. Um, again, Everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Herlene, Herlene Raphael. I'm your neighborhood nurse practitioner from Biggs Homes and Wellness, where we provide tools and tips so you can have quality of life and overall health well being. We're glad that you're here. Until next week, next Tuesday afternoon at 5 p.m., same time, same place, different guest. Um, we have something in store for you so you could grow and be better. God bless you all. Again, Nancy, thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.